on the Indian soil. During these 500 years, the Baghdad Caliphate did not give much importance to Hindustan because of the long distance, wide differences in cultures and ideology. Islam faced the biggest challenge in India due to idol worship, which was in the roots of the Hindu spiritual society. However, Baghdad absorbed the scientific and mathematical knowledge from the visiting Indian scholars and scientists. The Baghdad society loved the intellectual, scientific, and literary knowledge so much that it turned into a non-military society. This perhaps prevented the conquest of India by the central caliphate of Baghdad. However, the independent kings of India or Afghanistan had respect for the caliph of Baghdad. When Qutub established the first Muslim kingdom at Delhi, the glorious Baghdad civilization was on its way towards decline. There in Spain, the great Muslim empire had broken into hundreds of small kingdoms called Taifas, and disunity became a way of life among the rulers of Spain. The Spanish Muslim civilization, which was once the pride of humanity, was now facing extinction. It is at this time the Muslim rule was to achieve a stable form in India and Qutub gave such a form in 1206 AD and al strengthened it. Since the Baghdad Caliphate had lost control in Afghanistan and India, the local leaders began to forget the concept of one Islamic state and one Muslim brotherhood that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught during his lifetime. The unity among Muslims began to crack down. Several families in Afghanistan began to rise to power, and every time a family rose to power, they totally destroyed the family who was in power before them. Hence, at Delhi, the Muslim throne was owned by several families, like the Tughlaq family, Slay family, Kilji family, Lodi family till 1526 AD. Each of these families wanted to experience the glamour of Indian power. Finally, another family from Afghanistan known as the Mughal family rose to power. Babur came to India in 1526 AD, defeated Ibrahim Lodi, and founded the great Mughal Empire. Here in Europe, there was an urgent need to find an ocean route to India. Europeans had lost control of the land route to India to the Muslims, who were now the masters of the Mediterranean Ocean, North Africa, Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, and India. In those days, Europe depended upon Indian spices, jewels, diamonds, and scientific knowledge. The prosperity and cultural heritage of India were well known and accepted in Europe. While Queen Isabella was celebrating her victory at Alhambra Palace in Granada, Columbus expressed once again his fascination to go to India, and this time his wish was granted. He sailed with his crew and discovered America in October 1492, but he thought that he had found India. Many navigators and sailors began to plan for this great adventure, and finally Vasco da Gama landed on the soil of South India in 1498 AD. When Vasco da Gama landed in India, the Delhi throne was under the control of the Afghan family, known as the Lodi family, and very soon the great Mughal Empire was to start. The Mughal Empire is one of the most popular empires in the history of India. The Mughal rule started in 1526 A.D. and ended in 1857 A.D. As I have pointed out previously, several Muslim families in Afghanistan claimed superiority to one another, and each of them wanted to reap the glory of India. This time it was the family of Babur who was struggling in Afghanistan from Samarkand to Kabul to Gragana. Babur was a descendant of Tumulain on his father's side and of Genghis Khan on his mother's side. These two great names of history were enough to excite Babur to seek a kingdom for himself. When things did not go very well for him in Afghanistan due to severe family competition, he came towards India with an army of 25,000 against the Indian Muslim ruler Ibrahim Lodhi, who brought over 100,000 soldiers to fight. Babur defeated and killed Ibrahim Lodhi in Panipat, India, 
and founded the Mughal Empire. Babur died in 1530 AD and one of his sons, Humayun, became an emperor of India. While you are seeing this sharp monument, Humayun's tomb in Delhi, I will narrate to you the treachery of Humayun's brothers. Humayun had three brothers, Kamran, Hindal, and Askari. Humayun was the eldest brother. The life of Humayun is a great drama of how his brothers betrayed and harmed him. The new emperor was defeated by another Muslim leader from Bengal, Shur Shah, and he escaped crossing the Ganges River and wished brother Kamran would help him in his hour of defeat. But Kamran did not fulfill the wish of Humayun and separated himself from him to declare himself king. Humayun wandered around in the northwestern part of India while his brother Kamran had spread orders to kill him. The other two brothers changed their colors depending upon the circumstances. Shir Shah took over Delhi and the Mughal Empire of Babur seemed to have vanished very fast. Humayun, determined to regain his throne, was running all around asking for help and pleaded with his brothers to join forces with him and crush the enemy. But they did not agree with him, instead plotting to eliminate him so that they could become the kings. At last, Humayun and his wife and friends left India and entered Afghanistan. Meanwhile, Kamran had already moved to Kabul, Afghanistan for safety and was waiting to eliminate Humayun upon his arrival. Humayun came to Kandar, where his other brother Hindal was ruling. Kamran put Hindal under house arrest when Hindal refused to read the prayer lecture in Kamran's name, and Askari, the third brother, took over Kandar on behalf of Kamran. Humayun was warned by several of his friends that his brother Askari was hostile and had a good army. So Humayun immediately changed his direction towards Persia. The Shah of Persia received him well and offered him help with a very good army on the condition that Humayun become a Shi'i Muslim and spread the Shi'i doctrine in India. Humayun signed the agreement and on his way to India he captured his brothers, forgave two of them, but Kamran was not forgiven for his treachery and fraud. Kamran was ordered that he should be blinded. Humayun then sent him to Mecca so that God may forgive his sins. Kamran died in Arabia in 1557 A.D. Humayun regained his throne at Delhi after defeating Shir Shah and the Mughal Empire was restored. Humayun died January 24, 1556 A.D. He was tortured by his brothers all his life. Akbar the Great in the history of India because of the power and territory he achieved for the empire. He was the son of Humayun, succeeded to the throne at the young age of 12 under the guardianship of Bairam Khan. However, as he reached his adulthood, he began to see the facts that he was surrounded by a heavy Hindu majority, whereas he and his family came from Afghanistan with a different culture and religion. The fact that Islam emphatically prohibits idol worship bothered him because idol worship in turn was a basic element in the religion and cultural lives of the Hindus. He accumulated religious leaders and priests from the Muslims, Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and Buddhists and conducted debates to understand the differences. He concluded during the study circles that the stability and everlasting power of the Mughal Empire could not be achieved by establishing an Islamic state. He married a Rajput girl to impress the Hindus that he cared for them. He ordered his children to study Christianity and practice parts of all religions. He allowed idol worship in his own bedroom. It is also said that he used to worship the sun every morning and the fire in the evening. By doing this, he attracted the favorable attention of all communities who thought that Akbar respected their religious beliefs so much that he even adopted them for his own life. It has been written that gradually Akbar lost his belief in the 
prophethood of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the five pillars of Islam. Islamic work was discouraged and Muslim communities would not practice and promote Islam openly because of the unfavorable attitude of Akbar and his faithfuls.